Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the program guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Hi, I'm Sam from Adventures in Crafting. I'm a craft and crochet teacher based in Tring in Hertfordshire. Since lockdown, I've moved all of my classes onto Zoom, so I now have customers from all over the country. I teach lots of crafts, but crochet is my specialism. I became passionate about crochet when I was pregnant with my fourth child and in desperate need of some me time. Crochet became my sanctuary and I've crocheted every day since then. I'm a qualified teacher and eight years ago I began teaching crochet. I love sharing my passion with other people. I design patterns, sell kits and teach lots of classes. My classes range from beginners to next steps, specific makes and clubs. I also like to design crochet alongs. My most recent one was my Autumn Granny Square crochet along, which resulted in me designing this allotment jumper, which I love to wear when I'm out gardening and looking after my chickens. <laughs> my crochet tip for you is to enjoy it. Crochet should be about taking part in a hobby that brings you pleasure. My claim to fame is that I met Kirsty Allsop at the Handmade Fair and I gave her one of my crochet sunflower brooches. I'm so excited to be taking part in Yarn Lane and I hope you'll enjoy my demonstrations. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well our family run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly warm-hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. 
Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Have you heard about Yarn Lane? TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Hello, welcome to Yarn Lane. We are the only uh, UK shopping channel totally and utterly dedicated to everything yarn, whether it be crochet or knitting or animal making or anything. Today we are doing uh, granny squares with Sam Sabido. But before we do anything, I need to tell you, if you buy anything from us today, your name will go into a competition and one of you could win, we'll announce it on Sewing Street tomorrow, a Sewing for Soul book, a... Uh, Charm pack, two charm packs from Kay Fassett and a panel uh, celebrating the Queen's birthday. All of those are the prize. All you have to do, there it is. All you have to do is buy something and we'll announce the winner tomorrow on Sewing Street. Right, so there's so much to tell you about. I can't <laughs> stop and chatter today. So uh, I've got my Facebook Live over. You want to send a message or ask Sam a question, but let's just get going. So we're going to talk about cardigans first, right? So cardigans I have got in three different colourways. Oh, there they are. Three different colourways in children and in adult. So let's start with Blossom Adult, right? Blossom, Blossom Adult. <laughs> it's going to be one of those shows, everybody. Blossom Adult is there. Uh, and you get everything you need in there. You, the only thing you don't get is a crochet hook. I'm not going to get all these yarns out. You can see all the different colours there. But they are beautiful, beautiful colours and everything like that. And it goes up to a large, uh, it's large or extra large? Large, large sorry, large. Around about size 22, 24. 22, 22, 24. Because it's a size 22, 24. So there you go. So that one there is your adult casual granny cardi kit. Beautiful, isn't it? Right, then I've also got that in children called Blossom Children. 
So basically, it's the same colours, just because th this is ch child size. Here. Now, how do the sizes work for children? So the sizes work for children in age bands, starting right. from age one. So you haven't got the baby sizes, right. but from age one upwards. And, Perfect. And you get the pattern in every kit. The pattern is actually the same. So you get the pattern from age one up to large grown up. Oh, so, oh, I see. So yeah, whichever, yeah. whichever, whichever bundle one you, you get, buy, yeah. you get the amount. Of, so, so if you buy the child, it does all of the child sizes. Yes. And you get the pattern for child and adult. Yes. Yeah. And in the grown up one, the adult one, yeah. you get the yarn for the biggest size. Exactly. But you could make two tiny ones if you wanted to exactly. add to that yarn. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. So you get all the instructions for all the sizes in every single kit. Okay, so that was that one. Now I'm just going to put that there because I've now got Blue Skies Ad. Oh, that's that one. Blue Skies Adult, which is this one. Yeah. That, well, I, th this obviously <laughs> is the adult size, but this is the colourway. Now I seem to remember these. Uh, there's a choice, isn't there? For yes. If you want the hood or you don't want the hood, yes. that, that's another um, in the instructions. That's right, right, in all the instructions. But this is the colourway. For your, uh, this is the adult, but that's the colourway of the uh, blue skies. Beautiful colours in there, aren't they? Lovely. Now, do you get the toggles in the in the thing, or do you need to buy those? No, separately? they're an extra buy. That's fine. Yeah. I've got these here. Are they the same toggles for the adults? They are the children. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. So I've got the toggles coming up in a minute. So it's wrong way up. This is, I'm not surprised this one's popular. This is beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. So that's the adult, uh, that's the code for the adult, 34.99. I've also got it in the children's, which is just adorable, isn't it? Which is this one here. What's this one here? Do you get that as well? Well, that, <laughs> no, that's been made by Terry, Terry Ann. Terry Ann, I can tell you that's yeah. been made by Terry Ann, yeah. <laughs> and she oh, sorry, we didn't, we didn't, who did that one? That you, one was Jenny. Jenny made that one, Terry yeah, Ann made this one. We it. have to give them all a shout out, that's all. <laughs> So that, that, this is the child one here in the blue skies. I think that's lovely. That's really lovely, isn't it? Okay, so let me put that to one side. Uh, have we put yeah, the adult and the child? Yeah, I've done that, right? Now, this one here is called Rainbow Adult, which is being modelled by our <laughs> model today. <laughs> A bit of, loads of colours going on today. Got lots of colours going <laughs> on. Yeah. So, so that's you can make that this one. This is the largest size of the adults. Right. Yeah. So you know it is big. It's a fair size. It's a good and also size. It's long yeah. as well. I and it's long. It's you so can long. go as long as you like. Yeah. Um, and I've gone for hood, but as we said, you could go V-neck. There's instructions in there for V-neck. So there's as enough well. yarn in here to make that. Yes. And yeah. any and other size and you want more. To. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Okay, that's lovely. So that's the adult one of those. Then we also have that one in children. So who made yours? You. So I made mine, you yeah. You made yours. Who made this little that one? That one was made by Lindsay for her daughter. That's why Lind it's got a oh, sticker so she, on. Oh, so Lindsay's been wearing it because there's a Lindsay's sticker daughter's on been here. wearing it to nursery. She even had a nursery photo taken oh. of it. I left the sticker on because I didn't want her to be upset when she got it back. No. <laughs> so I've been going around borrowing them all back from everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all sick of me. <laughs> so that's really, really cute, isn't it? So that's the little one there. It's just adorable. Oh, no, yes, yeah, so that was not good. That's, so that's the one so without the hood. she's chosen to do the V-neck, yeah. So yeah. you've got the instructions in every pattern in every kit to make it with the, the hood or, or not. with that. I don't yeah. have the hood on mine, I'm afraid. I like the hood, yeah. Um, June says, I'm just sitting here with Sam's Butterfly Top Kit, the most delicious yarn ever. Sam's instructions are the best I've ever had, and I've been crocheting oh. for over 40 years. Oh, well wow. done, Sam. Thanks so much. Oh, That's so lovely. Another Sam said, looking forward to seeing all of Sam's amazing mates. Claire says, hello. Right, hello. okay, I've got to go on. Can't chat, can't chat, can't chat. <laughs> right, now we're moving to the bag, which I've never seen before, which is on the shelf over here. So I'm starting with the forget-me-not, which I'm presuming is this one here. That's right, yeah. So that everything you need in there. So now I can feel there's something... So you get the dowling as well, is yeah. it down? For the handles. For the handles. <laughs> and the yarn, oh, beautiful yarns in there. So now they, now they, they look like, um, they're, they're not granny squares, are they? They are, no, yeah. No, they're not. But they've got great big beautiful flowers on yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, I'll show you those later. Brilliant. <laughs> so, so that's... Yeah. That's lovely. Now, what have you got hanging from there? Fried egg. <laughs> you, get, um, you get everything you need to make the little bee so he can be a scissor fob. So right, you get here you go. The, go. Got I, the I made bee. one for John. 
So you've got a little bee, uh, you've got, so you've got the eyes, the stuffing, you get the key ring, you get a lobster class so you can put your scissors on it. Oh, that all comes in it? That all comes in it, oh, yeah. Oh, brilliant. So everything you need to make a little bee, and oh. also you might want to make a little flower to put your needles in. So okay, it can be one a thing I didn't bag. do, and one thing I didn't do for the cardigans, remind me to go back to the toggles in a minute. So that's, the, that's, oh, they're all on the website, they're all on the website, you're fine. So that's forget-me-not bag. <laughs> you should see the floor around here, that's beautiful, <laughs> isn't it? Now I've got vintage rose, which is, uh, that's a beautiful colour, isn't it there, vintage rose. There you go, £30.99. I know last time you were on, these all sold out, didn't they? Yes, yeah, they all sold out, out. All yeah, yeah. So that's your vintage rose. Oh, did you take these pictures? Yeah. You need to put your glasses on when you're taking the pictures, I think. <laughs> Not very good lighting. Oh. Anyway, that's beautiful. Gorgeous colour, that one. And then the one that you're seeing on the shelf here, that one is called uh, Poppy. And that's the most gorgeous kind of uh, red with the green and then the flower on it there. It's not a finished bag. It's just a sample for you to see it there. There's the finished. Oh, so where's the finished bag then? Well... Claire made the one for the original show. Right. And um, obviously once they've made the sample, I give it back to them. Yeah. And she's gifted hers. Oh, So I then see. another lovely friend, Terry Ann, I knew was in the process of making hers. Right. Which, which she bought. And I asked her if I could borrow it. Oh, so I could show you the colourway. So that, this is then. Terry Ann's, yeah. So I knew that she'd sort of okay. made some good progress. Who made the, the blue one and the pink one then? Blue one was... Uh, Jenny, right. pink one with Lindsay. Honestly, you've got so <laughs> many of them. I'm very right. lucky. So that's that. So now we're going to go on <laughs> to ponchos. We just want you to see everything before we start the crocheting, that's all. So I've got ponchos here <laughs> somewhere. Have I got them? In? I'll just fall over. No, that's not a jump. Oh, yeah, they're not there anymore. They're here, they're here, they're here. Here, these, these are the ponchos. Uh, what threw me is, is that, oh, there's a fourth one there. There's a fourth one there. So the poncho in surf, which blue. is the blue. <laughs> yeah. That's adorable, isn't it? It's really lovely. Now, is it? Is, it that, is this just one size, one shape, one? No, this is sized as well. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so again, it goes up to kind of an extra large... 20 plus, I mean, you get loads of yarn and yeah. I always write instructions in my patterns for how to make it, adjust it to your size. So any size, I would the thing is, it, I, say. I would imagine that any size, if mean, you, you made the large one, yeah. you're just going to have a voluminous exactly. poncho, not you? Exactly. So I make, I, again, I ask my lovely friends to make all the samples. Yeah. So they are all different sizes, but I can get them all on. Yeah. And I'm, I'm normally an extra large, so... Yeah. But I was also thinking if you're petite, well, and your kids can wear exactly, the bigger ones. It's exactly. a bigger yeah, thing. So, so that's yeah. surf was the blue one. There yeah. you go. Surf's on single figures. Uh, ice cream. Oh, which is the one behind oh, you. Oh, the one on the stand. Yeah. Hang on, poor old Emma's having to press <laughs> buttons, move cameras, find stills. There's your ice cream. They're lovely colours in there, really aren't lovely. they? Ice cream, summer nights, crochet. Okay, then I'm moving on to Arcade. Which is the bright which one. Which is adorable. That's yeah. A, yeah, I love yeah. that one. That's I'm the white. black background with all the bright <laughs> colours. That one's called Arcade. Yeah. Now, who's made all these? Have we done their Have we done the names for these? Oh, I'm going to have to try and remember now. Uh, Lindsay was surf. Yeah. Claire was the ice cream, I think. Yeah. No. Yes. No, I've done it wrong. Jenny was surf. Lindsay was mermaid. I made the black one. And right. Claire okay. made the ice cream. So there you go. Thank the you, ladies. Yes. <laughs> the last one's called mermaid, which is the middle this one. This one, yeah. The middle one, yeah. There you go. Graphics that one out. Then mermaid coming in. There's too much choice, isn't there? There's so <laughs> many lovely colours. Okay, so that's Mermaid in Poncho. And just four more to go now. Just four more to go. I've got your jumpers now, which are here. Right. <sighs> right. I, 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 right. Brights. This one. Which is the one down there, yeah. They're beautiful blues and yeah. pinks in there, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, really lovely. So that's your, now what size is this one? What size is this one? Same? Likewise, yeah, you can make this in any size and in the pattern I've written how to adjust it for your size. Okay, so but this is only adults. This is children, only adults, yeah, there isn't only a children's adults, yeah. version of this, okay. yeah. Any adult size. 34 99 The thing is, if you go to our Facebook 
fan page. Just hun, you've, yeah. you've caused a huge yeah. world. That's great. You know, I mean, these sold out twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got nature. Which is this blue one. Uh, not blue, brown. I was say, that's <laughs> blue. Do you want me to Yeah, bring it up. Yeah. It's a sort of, it's not bright brown, it's like a car Oops, car oh key sort of colour, isn't it? Yeah, it's got like your brown background, it's got sage in it, it's got like a Lovely, yeah, isn't beige. it? Beige. Oh yeah, yeah. Beautiful. So that one there is your nature. Then I've also got uh, jumper in black retro. I think I can guess which one that one is. <laughs> Sorry you're going so fast, we just want you to see everything <laughs> before we start doing the crocheting, that's all. Okay, that's the, that's the black retro. And then last but certainly not least, oh, hang on, what's that in there? What did I say I put in the box? This one is uh, summer. No, that's Emma's favourite, that one. Summer's in. Supposedly, $34.99. Beautiful day yesterday, mind you. $34.99. Now, there you see now, they're, so they're all granny squares. All granny squares, but yeah. But they're all different, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you could do a granny square, you could do any of these, basically. Yes, all variations on a granny square. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I'm going to sit down now. <laughs> um, what are you, what are you, so do I need to do anything else on my side, or are you just going to... Right. Uh, the water on pre-order. Oh, toggles and things are all on pre-order. If you go to the website, they're all on pre-order. Right. So, what are you going to show well, us? Well, I've um, brought along um, the things to demonstrate the granny, casual granny cardigan, which is the one that's available in children's and adult yeah. sizes, and the daisy bag, because both of these sold out last time. Perfect. And people have been asking me to bring them back. Lovely. So, I, And also, I know that people are working on them at home, so I thought it might be useful if I Yeah, so if you've got any questions, if you're sitting at home now working on it, if you've got any questions, just send them in on Facebook Live or on um, the website or on the email, uh, and we'll try and answer them if, they, if you want to. Right. So, so if I start with the basic granny square, Please. which is what the casual granny cardi uh -huh. is made from. Oh, okay. So these are so these traditional. are your traditional granny square. Right. So this is really good for a beginner. So if you're never done, even if you've never done crochet before, and certainly if you're brand new to it, this is a really good project. Good. So this right. is the one that's in children's or adult sizes. Um, what size hook do we need? Four millimetre hook, but also there is some variation in the pattern. So when you look at the pattern. The way that you change the sizing, so this has got, so this is what I mean about the fact that you've got all of the children's sizes. So I've gone children from one all the way up to 12. Right. And then from adult size small, size six, I've put 18 plus, but as I say, I'm a size 20 and this is big on me. Yeah. So it'll go, it'll go bigger than that. Um, and I, the reason I stopped at 12 is because my daughter's 13, she wears adults small. So, right, okay. you know, you okay, can, yeah. but you've got all the measurements on there. So first thing first, always choose which size you're going to make. And then it will tell you according to the size you're going to make, which hook size you oh, need. Oh, okay, okay. So starting from a three, going up to a five. So I always think it's good to have a set. Okay, well, I've got a question. Go on. Go back to that, that, that chart there. <laughs> Why mm. is it then that the 11 to 12 has a four and a half millimetre, but then small adult, you jump back down to a four millimetre? Because with the um, adults, so with some of them, you make more rounds. Right. So, each, so you still use a smaller hook, but your square will end up bigger. So yeah. I've brought these squares along to show yeah. you. So, for example, for the small children's ones, you've just got three you rounds in total. Got it. For the slightly bigger ones, you've got four rounds in total. Yeah. So it's sort of two ways that I've altered the sizing. And this is my one. Right. Okay, so this was the large. Actually, I think it might be the smaller than a large medium made with a four mil hook. Yeah. So for a large, right. you're making it with a five mil hook. So you've got all those variations in there. Lovely. And everything you need to work it out when you get it. So if you have the child to hand, if you're making it for a child, I do suggest measuring them because I've got four children. They all vary and, yeah. you know, they some... That picture on social media, <laughs> I'm not sure you put it, it looks brilliant. Yeah, all them are they're on. so sweet. They but how old are your oldest? He's 16. He was 17 in a week or so. Oh, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't believe it. Because I, I, know, I know you've got four children. I've seen pictures of them before and it was only when that came up and I was like, 
hang on, he's not a child. He's, he must be a friend who's coming. He looks a bit <laughs> old, too old to be a child of yours. Yeah, no, he is really, really grown up these days. Oh, and he still, we'll still put on crochet to have his picture He's really good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, he said, is this going on social media? <laughs> yeah, afraid so. Just yeah, don't, don't, let, just don't tag me. Not that you let me follow you or anything anyway. No, so. exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, we've got a question. What type of make of yarn comes in the kits, please? Is it all the same or is it all different? No, it varies, but the vast majority is um, King Cole. I'm just trying to think if there's anything that's not King Cole. No, they're all King Cole and vast majority are acrylic, 100% right. okay. acrylic. Ponchos are a beautiful soft cotton, so that's why they're a bit more expensive because right. it's a, a okay. really, really lovely yarn. Okay. Um, but the rest of them are 100% acrylic, so they're washable. It's lovely to work with the King Cole can I wash? Range. Can I wash the poncho as well? Yes, yeah, that's yeah. wash. I mean, I would hand wash, but you know, yeah. sometimes I do throw it in a washing machine, as I've said before. And so. you need to re-block when you wash? <laughs> yeah, it's useful too. Okay. And actually it does, uh, well, I've got a story about the blue bag. Maybe I should save that when it comes okay. to... Okay, <laughs> right, we'll come back to <laughs> I'll that. come back then. to that when it comes to washing. Okay. Right, so... Um, so you start by deciding what size you want to make and then you're launching into your granny square. Right. So I just I won't spend too long on this because I've done granny squares before, but yep. just for anyone who's sort of new to it. So you start it also in the pattern, in all the patterns, it will talk you through the colour order. So you work, work out which one you want to start with. So you're going to start with a slip knot on your hook. So you put the tail in the palm of your hand, bring the ball end over to make a loop. Put your hook through from the front, grab that end that's over your finger and put it through to the front. So you've got a loop up in the air and then just pull that out. It almost went into a magic ring then. Pull the tail to tighten it. So all, the ball, all this end here is attached to the ball. Right. Okay, so that's your slip knot. So the important thing is it needs to move up and down the hook. So if you've got another way of making a slip knot, your way is absolutely fine. That's just for people that are brand new to it. Mm -hmm. You're then going to chain four so you grab the arm with your hook, pull it through that loop four times. And then you're going to slip stitch in the first chain to make a little ring. So all the way back to that first chain you made. If you can't find it, pull the knot tight and it will help you find it. Just push your hook underneath one loop, grab the arm with your hook and bring it back through that loop and the loop on your hook. So you've made a tiny ring. And actually, it's quite useful to go through the classic granny square because the other ones are all just kind of a variation of oh, that. OK, OK. So, so you start off with that on all, on start all of with, them. Yeah, yeah, all the projects start with that. And then you're going to chain three in the air, which I always say is my pretend first treble. Uh -huh. And then you're going to put all your stitches into this little ring here. So yarn over into that ring. Pull the yarn back through, gives you three loops on your hook. You're going to make treble crochet, mm -hmm. so three loops on your hook, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. So at the moment, I've got my chain three, which is my pretend first treble, and one treble. So one more treble. So all the stitches in your first round are going into the same ring in the centre there. So you've got your little groups of three. So with a traditional granny square, you're working in groups of three treble. Uh huh. Okay, chain two, and put another three trebles in that ring. So it starts to build up its shape. So you've now got uh -huh. like the side of a square, a little corner, and another side. So sometimes when you're new to it, these stitches are a little bit all over the place. So you can move them. Where you're sitting them around the chain, you can move them into position so you can pull them hold on to your little circle in the center and pull the stitches round it oh, okay so you've made a corner so yeah. you need it to look like a corner of a square and then you just repeat that so you do chain two and then three trebles back in that center and then once more chain two three trebles and then chain two for your final corner and you're going to slip stitch to finish in that third of that first three chain you made. Uh -huh. One, two, three. Dawn says, I'm a really experienced crocheter, but I love watching Sam. <laughs> She's so calm and clear. Oh, thank you, Dawn. Uh, and how she explains everything. That's lovely to hear, oh. thank you. Okay, so I'm at the end of that round, so I'm going to pull the loop up. And this is just how I fasten off because then I know I've got plenty of yarn. This length of yarn here will be the length that I have to weave it in at the end. Yeah. 
Do you have different scissors every time you come in? <laughs> I scrabble around the house looking for them every time as well. <laughs> I've got like 25 pairs of embroidery scissors at least, and okay. I have no Once idea where they are most bag, of the time. Attached. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's why that's such a good thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you remember where they are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so you finish the first round, and mm -hmm. I always say it needs to look square ish at yeah. this stage. So you can see you've got your four sides and your four corners. So you're going to join your new colour in any of those corner spaces. And I like to go away from the one that's got the tail and the slip stitch because that just gets in the way. Right. So let's go diagonally opposite. Put your hook through, grab a loop of your yarn, your new colour and pull a loop through. And then grab the yarn and pull it through to make one chain. And that is just your joining chain. So that's how you join the new colour. Right. Then you're going to do chain three in the air, which is your pretend first treble. Two trebles in the ring. I said in the ring, sorry, I meant in the corner space. Yeah, yeah, same place ring, you joined yeah. it, yeah. And then a chain two in the air again, and another three trebles in that same space. Yeah. So that's your corner. When you're on the corner, you're putting two groups of three. So you had the chain three that was the pretend treble plus two trebles, so that's a group of three. Chain two in the air and another group of three. And then chain one and then you repeat that. So you jump over. So sometimes people think this is a long way to jump, but then they, yeah. they question me. You sure? You sure? Yeah, but yeah. sure. <laughs> you jump over these three trebles here and you go into the next corner space, which is this hole here. And you're going to make three trebles, chain two, three trebles in there. June's mentioning saying, John, can I ask my usual question? What's the cardigan yarn feel like? I've got the cardigan yarn. Well, they're all soft, aren't they? This is big value, baby, King Cole. That's what you're saying, isn't yes, it, King Cole? Yeah. Um, well, I presume because it's baby. Hang on, does that say? Mm, yeah, not all of them are baby, but it just say, some uh, of the colours. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're soft. They they're, are they're soft. So, June, uh, if you, you could put these against a baby skin and they'd feel lovely and soft. So they're going to be fine again. No, that made me sound like I was calling you old then, but you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it, you'd put these against your skin. If you just, if you don't wear anything underneath it, June, you don't have to, that's what I'm saying, because it's lovely and soft, basically. Or on your arms, it's not going to be scratchy or itchy. It's lovely, soft yarn, isn't it? It is lovely. And what I like about this King Cole acrylic range is that it feels really soft, but it's got the, also got a sort of woolly texture. Yes, yes, So yes. I sometimes have to remind myself it's not got wool content. Yes. So... It's really nice in that way. Yeah, because it was made with wool, it might have a slight itchiness it can be, to it. Some yeah. people can be allergic and yeah. it can be itchy. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, and then that, it yeah. kind of also adds the issue of washing because it can... Yeah, shrink. Sometimes, well, yeah, exactly. Okay, so I've just worked all the way around there. I've finished with a chain one and I'm slip stitching to the third of the three chain. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just start off one more colour and hopefully that'll be enough to get people started if they are brand new to this. Uh -huh. And a reminder for those that maybe have done it before. Yeah, because sometimes it, it could be that somebody's done granny scares years and years yeah. ago. And then the, the kind of, uh, not the fad, but the kind of, it went out of fashion, didn't yes, it, for yeah, a while. Yes, absolutely. And they might not have been, or they brought up a family and didn't do it or anything. Yeah. And now we've got time and they want to start yeah, it again. It's, it's good to have a refresher, Exactly. Isn't it? It's quite a different way of working. If yeah. you're used to doing blankets, for example, where you work back and forth in rows... <laughs> So it could be that you've done lots and lots of crochet projects, but not done a granny square granny for square, a while. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So um, for the third row, if can I find the end of this yarn? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just cut that little bit off. Okay. You're going to, again, join in any corner space. So for every row, when you're changing colour, you join in a corner space. So any of the corner spaces, again, I tend to feel You see all those way. loose ends you've got there, you're going to have to weave those all in. Yes, afterwards. they're all going to need sewing in. You can yeah. work around them as you go, which is also a good way of, yeah. um, of, of using them up. But they will need to be kind of integrated into the work so that they Somehow, don't come yeah. undone. Yeah. So into a corner, so hook in, pull through the new colour, chain one to secure it. And it, every time you're on a corner, you do the same thing. To start off, you do a chain three two trebles so then I'm automatically started working around that tail there actually because it's something I do sometimes so if you want to incorporate the um, tail into your work so that you don't have to sew it in as you make your stitches work around the chain space and the tail mm -hmm. so then chain two three trebles so every time you're on a corner you've got your three trebles your chain two your three trebles 
So that's a corner done, and that's the same whichever round you're on. So you can kind of see the corners build up like so with your groups of three yeah. trebles. Now I'm working down the side, so working along the side, I should say. And so I'm going to chain one in the air, just a little bit of space to move me across to this hole here, which is your chain one space from last round. And in that gap, you're putting three trebles. But you're not turning a corner, so you just put three trebles in uh -huh. there. And then chain one, and then into the next corner. And as it's a corner, you're going to do three trebles. And then a chain two. And then three more trebles. Mm -hmm. So just to give you an idea of the shaping of it. And this is all there is to the um, granny square cardigan. You just make lots of granny squares. Right. So the sizes vary. Um, <coughs> you always finish, whichever size of square you're making, you always finish with your main colour on your outside right. rounds. Right, okay. But um, yes, but other than that, that's all you're doing is making lots of squares like that. The only difference is with the triangle for the V-neck. Oh, OK, yes. So if you're... Um, I did demonstrate it last time I was on. Yeah, can you remember what date that was? Oh, on. No, um, never mind, don't worry. <laughs> I could guess. No, 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 April. don't worry. <laughs> but I can find out and put it on the fans page later if anyone wants oh, to yeah, know. Oh, yeah, that would be brilliant if you could, I'll yeah. do that. So that's that's these here at the top at the top of the neck. Yes. They're like half... That like a half a half yes, a square that's there. Yes, exactly there. it. So that's how it shapes it if you're going to make a V-neck. Yeah. It's only literally there that you need the triangles. So I think, I mean, I can demonstrate them, but I was no, thinking no, no, maybe no. I'll go on to the flowers I, I'm, I'm for the I'm going to go completely off, off kilter now because I was just looking at your cardigan and I was thinking, oh, there's a big band of grey between that one and that one. And then I've noticed it's also on, on, on here as so well. So obviously there's a bit where... Yeah, so when you've made, what, you, what you do is you make up your um, squares into panels. Yeah. So, and th again, this varies according to the size, but you've got all these grids in the back of your pattern, which are your panels for your back, your front, your sides, yeah. your sleeves. Yeah, and there's the, side, there's the triangular ones there if you're doing the... Yes, if you're doing yes, the, that's the right. Neck, yeah. And then if you want to alter the size of it, you can also do granny stripes down the which, edge. Which are, is that Which is this? what that band is, yeah. And you can do them in any colours. They don't have to be... Um, oh, so you could do that in the, in the burgundy or something yeah, like exactly, that. Yeah, exactly, or stripes. Or, so uh, if you look at the bottom of that cardigan... You've got the multicoloured stripes of Granny there. Oh, so that's is that the same as that then? Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, so that's worked in different colours in stripes. Oh, you could actually same do. Stitch. You could actually do that to echo that, couldn't you? There. Yes, that would be really nice. Yeah, that would be lovely. Enough oh, okay. So I, 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 sorry to jump. jump <laughs> over, <just laughs> that's a good question. Thinking, that's a bit extra, extra yeah. grey there, but. Um, so that's one of the ways that I've adjusted the sizing. So right. you'll see when you have the. Pattern. But that's in the instructions. If you. It's if all you in see, the instructions. Yeah. Really detailed instructions. Brilliant. And the granny stripe, which I was just talking about, yeah. is the same principle you're putting, but it's as if you're just wor working along the side and not in a corner. So it'll be three trebles, chain one, three trebles, chain one, three trebles, working in a row. Um, so you won't turn any corners, but okay. it's worked in exactly the same way. So Okay, someone <laughs> said, if they made one and they tried it on and they need to make... Uh, Ch changes to the size is it eat do they have to unravel it and start again so, no in the pattern i've talked you through this idea that you make your panels up so you've got one for each of the sides yeah one for each of the sleeves and one for the back and the hood if you settle on the hood then before you join it all together if you join it with stitch markers or um you can just use big stitches or pins just hold it all together and put it on right or put it on your child, whoever you're making it yeah. for. So then, if you need to then make it bigger, or you've still got the opportunity to do so. So you haven't stitched so. all the squares you together. You have stitched the ones for the panels, yeah. but not the whole, whole thing. thing. You've yeah. not assembled the and whole thing. And then on your instructions, it'll say how you can make it. Or yes. you just add a yes. row here or I've talked through it, all of that in the instructions. Yes, yeah, so it's really easy to adjust. It's a really good sort of first step in making crochet clothing uh -huh. because it uh, talks you through all of those stages. Of course, yeah. yeah. So there yeah. you go. I don't know who it was that asked the question, but you don't need to unpick it. Just um, make your panels, pin them together, and then just try it on. Exactly. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. So okay. where would you like to go? Are we carrying on with so these? So shall we, well, I think uh, we got time. What time are we on? Yes. Yeah. Shall we move on to the daisies? Because I think yeah. I'd oh, like, yeah, love these. to yes, show you how to make the daisies. Yes, 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 yeah. Exactly. Now, if you... Oh, no, I'm not going to ask that silly question. No questions, silly. No questions, a silly question. I quite like one of these, but made <laughs> out of those. 
But you, you'd have to, the, the kit for that obviously isn't Buy enough. Buy both the kits <laughs> and then you could use the pattern from the daisy and but construct it in the same way as the oh, granny's so you can the make cardigan. that pattern but in that colourway or whatever. Yes, Got yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. 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 But that looks like lovely, it uses up it? lots of lots and lots of yarn. This it's one. not too bad, but yeah, the because they are pop, they're um, popcorn stitches, the daisies, okay. so they do use up more yarn. Yeah. But um, you're obviously not using very much of it because they're quite small. Yeah, but also if could you mix that one and that one? So you could really you make could, like, yeah. uh, the old one a daisy and then do Definitely. the rest as your granny squares? Oh, yeah. You could, yeah, okay. yeah, be great fun doing something like that. Okay, so Daisy Meadow bag. So moving on to this one. Right, this I'm one. I'm gonna take one off. <laughs> oh, he says. Right, okay. Oh, we've got the one that's got a story behind it. <laughs> I've got what? Oh, the story. Yeah, that's why I picked that so one. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, it looks lovely. Well, that one, my friend. Um, Jenny made yeah and her dog chew loved the handles keep it away from dogs if you uh, she's got a puppy so right. he chewed the handles and part of that bag handle the crochet oh, bit to no. pieces she thought it was written off but I fixed it yesterday oh. and washed it and look it's good as new yes so. exactly. oh. <laughs> is the dog all right dog's fine <laughs> maybe in maybe in trouble but <laughs> yes yeah Okay, right. Uh, June says, yippee, got the rainbow casual cardi as modelled by the lovely Sam. Love how the kits come in drawstring bags. So useful mm -hmm. for keeping everything together. Iris says, what channel is this on, please? Uh, 72 Freeview and 670 is Sky. Right. Okay. So the Daisy Meadow bag is also made in panels. Right. And, and it's kind of a box bag shape. So you've got your two panels, which these red ones that um oh yes, yes, had yes made up but then you've also got the bottom and the two sides right. that are made um, I'm listening. in solid granny squares yeah so you've got two different types of granny square that this is made with you've got the daisy square which is a motif really and then you've got the solid granny squares for the sides okay. and the bottom yeah so it sits like a box bag so when you've got things in it it expands it opens up so you can get lots of your project work in okay, it okay lovely um and the lining isn't included, but you've got that on the website. Oh yeah, yeah. Go to the so sewing, it goes to the Sewing Street website. Oh, oh, it's on Yarn Lane website. Sorry, I didn't know that. Yarn Lane website. It's on on the pre-order section. Right. And I would recommend lining it. I mean, you can not line it, but it will stretch a little bit. So yeah. that we ha and everybody had a go at lining them, whether you hand sew or machine sew. The ladies that helped me make the samples all lined theirs and even if they weren't confident with sewing so and is there are there instructions inside how to do it yes Perfect. yeah right. yeah i wouldn't want to show them to you but <laughs> do you want what? nothing nothing I, I i there are instructions inside <laughs> have you written the instructions inside? yes the rubbish that so we're saying. <laughs> i'm so not saying that i'm, I'm saying crochet saying is my specialism but the instructions <laughs> are fine people have sent me loads of lovely photos of bags i've embarrassed myself now oh people have made, sent me loads of lovely photos of their finished lined bags um yeah so they're ample good enough perfect perfect <laughs> uh, sam jan is lovely she's right it does feel as if it's got wool in it but it's lovely and soft just crocheting the spring jumper together now says jane and uh oh that's it that's it that's it that's it right. okay right so start with these um flower squares you start with the center color so you start with the yellow mm -hmm. and so you're going to start exactly the same again with your chain of four and a slip stitch so you're going to do four in the air and then slip stitch And then you're going to chain three and you're going to do 11 trebles into that ring. So this is a little bit different because there's no chain spaces. So you're making a little circle. Right. So you're working to the center again. So you're one treble, then push it into the hole. One treble, then put it into the hole Exactly. Like that. Yeah. So there's no chain spaces. So you're literally making 11 trebles plus your chain three. Okay. So you, all together, that's 12. So you're looking to have 12 posts all together, but the first one being the chain three. So you work around, whiz around, making your 12, and you'll see when you've done that, you've got a little circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, oops. Oh. <laughs> 10, 11, 12, okay. So I've counted 12, including that three chain that I started with. Right. Then you slip stitch in the third of the three chains. So you finish it in the same way as your other 
mm. granny square. In the what, third one? Oh, yeah, in, in the, the last third, one. Yeah, in the yeah, last yeah, one, in the it. top one that's next to the yeah. first stitch you made. Mm -hmm. And you can see it looks more of a circle shape now. Yeah. And then you just fasten it off. Okay, and then you're going to move on to the petals. Right. So for the petals, you're joining in any of these yellow stitches. So find any of the Vs and put your hook under them and pull a loop through. And then you chain four in the air and you're going to make a popcorn stitch. And that's what gives those flowers their lovely three-dimensional look. Yeah. OK, so for a popcorn, this is going to be a double treble popcorn stitch. So you've got a beginning popcorn because it's got this pretend double treble in. So the chain right. four pretends to be a double treble. So yarn over twice into the same space, come back through. And that gives you four loops on your hook. So a double treble is a taller stitch. Uh -huh. So yarn over through two, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. And that's one double treble made. So you've got your chain four and your double treble. Okay. And then you're going to put three more double trebles in that same space. So right. one, so always putting yarn over twice. So in all my patterns, you've got your stitch guide at the beginning. So if you haven't done a double treble before, there's also a stitch guide to talk you through how to do it. Yeah. So I've done, this is the beginning popcorn. I've got four double trebles and my chain four. Yeah. So for the chain four, find the fourth one up, put your hook through that fourth chain, push it right the way through. So sorry, what I forgot to mention is I've taken my hook out of this loop. So for the popcorn, you take your hook out of that loop, push your hook through the fourth of the four chain. Whoops, struggle to get through. That's it. And then grab that loop you took your hook out of and pull that through loop through that chain. Right. Oh, uh, wait, see it causing it a dart. Give it yeah, shape, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It gathers all of those stitches together yeah. at the front. So you've got a very clear front to this. At yeah. the back, it's flat. Yeah. And at the front, you've brought all of those stitches together. Okay. So I just need to point something out. The picture on the right there, it says Forget Me Not Daisy. You are going to get, that looks navy blue on my screen here. You are going to get this really beautiful petroly blue colour. That's, ju that's just um, Sam's bad that's, lighting. It is. It's my bad photography. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just didn't want you to think it's they were really a navy blue It's really hard to capture bag. the yeah. colours sometimes. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's technically called denim, but it is more of a petroly colour. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so into the, so then we've done that beginning popcorn. So yeah. then we've got done a chain two in the air and into the next stitch, I'm going to do five double trebles. So these are the proper double treble popcorns now. Right. So yarn over twice into the same stitch, pull back through, gives your four loops, yarn over through two, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. So repeat that five times in total. But it feels like you're going from the top of the petal I'll wait for you to, oh, oh, hang on. So there's all my stitches. I've got four so far. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. see how long they are. I see, yeah, yeah. And then I'm going all the way back down to this same stitch. Yeah. So I've got, I'm going to end up with five double trebles all sat in that same stitch. Uh huh. So for this popcorn, you take your hook out of that loop, yeah. find the first double treble you made, put your hook underneath the V of that. So if you're struggling to find it, one, two, three, four, it's the fifth one backwards. Mm -hmm. Hook goes under the V. Right. And then put a loop on the hook and pull that through. through right. Right, so now you're at the top of the petal. Yes. Where, well, okay. I may, may have missed a I see bit. what it you mean. It looked like you suddenly jumped down back to the base yeah, again. Yeah, so you, then you chain two in the air. Oh, they you a bit of space. Two, yeah, right. But then you do because your next stitch is going in back yeah, all the way back down here. Yeah, that's a long way here. to go down, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? And that's because um, you're doing a really tall stitch. Yeah. So by the time you finish making that stitch, you're back up at that height again. Yeah. So you just repeat that all the way around. So you're doing your five double treble popcorn, which yeah. is a bit of a mouthful. So five double trebles in a row. I'll just do one more to show you. So my third, four, and then one more, five. So you've got your five in a row. Uh -huh. Take your hook out of this loop. You see, I've stretched mine up to make sure I don't lose it. Yeah, yeah. Put your hook back through the first one. Mm -hmm. Grab that loop and then just pull it a bit tighter again. Yeah. 
and then pull that loop there on your hook through the first stitch right. and that's your popcorn made. Wow. And that's how all of those petals are made. So you go all the way around, chain two. Where else start. would you use popcorn then? There's lo yeah, there's loads of different uses. Anything that sort of needs to be a bit textural. Yeah. So um, you see them used a lot in 3D motifs like this. Um, Oh, and, uh, they pop up in blankets sometimes, in yeah, mandalas, yeah, yeah. all sorts. So, yeah, okay. they're lovely. So you carry on around doing all the all petals All the way for that. around. Right. Let me just see. I've got one in here somewhere. I don't know where I've put it, where I've put it now. Anyway, oh, I don't know where he's gone. But I had one that was done. <laughs> Give me a moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I've probably left it in my bag or something. Okay, so you'll go all the way around. You can see it on here yeah. until you've got a finished flower. Right. And then you're going to start shaping the the edges of it right. with your so, green. Oh, okay, so, 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 so you've do you done all the to, petals. So when you've done all the petals, so you, you just then knot add, off, what do you call it, slip knot off? Just yeah, you just fasten it, yeah. off. I'll just go around a bit further so I can show you. Okay. So I've done my chain two, and then I'm going to do... So you can see that I mean, once you get into the swing of this, these are really quick to make at first. You can see me whizzing around. At first, it probably seems like it's um, a little bit laboursome, but once yeah. you get into the swing of it, you oh, just I'm sit sure, and do yes. these. They're really fun. So if I do, so far I've got four, like so. Yeah. Um, uh, but you will go all the way around and end up with 12. Yeah. And like you said, then you'll slip stitch the top of the first popcorn. So yep. you'll end up with all of your 12 petals like so. So it's really important you have 12. Yeah. So do keep count because when it comes to the next part, you'll shape it. So what you do next, I'm just going to fasten that off, otherwise I'll be fighting with the white. Yeah. Is you join the green in any of your chain two spaces. So imagine oh, okay. yeah, finished. The yeah. So yeah, those gaps that you made, yeah. you're going to join the green in. Right. Okay. So any of the gaps, put your hook through, pull the yarn back through, join your green. So the reason I want to show you this is because you're making something slightly different again. Oh, okay. yeah, so yeah. you chain five in the air right. because you're going to make a treble treble cluster. A pardon? <laughs> a treble treble cluster. A treble cluster. treble cluster. So first That's of you... That's a song, isn't it? <laughs> treble cluster, treble treble cluster. <laughs> treble cluster. Anyway, go on. First of all, you've got the concept that is a treble treble. So you put your yarn over your hook three times for a treble treble. Yeah. All of this is written in the pattern. You've got the stitch, guys, so don't panic. Yeah. <laughs> it's all written in there. Go into that space, pull the yarn back through. So you've now got five loops on your hook. Right. So then you go yarn over through two of them, yarn over through two of them, yarn over through two of them, and you leave those final two loops on your hook. Right. So for this first, this is pretending to be a leaf. We, this is like the idea of the leaves around the edge of the daisy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for the first one, you're doing a two treble cluster, a two treble treble cluster. <laughs> so yeah. you leave these two on here. Yeah. You do yarn over three times. Right. Go back in the same space and pull your yarn back through. Right. So ignore these two here. They're just part of the previous stitches. Yarn over through two, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. So you've now got three, three left on there. Right. So with a cluster, you bring all of your stitches together into one stitch. Right. So grab the yarn and put it through all three. So you've clustered them together. So it gives you that sort of teardrop shape, yeah. that oval shape. So that's my first leaf on the corner. Mm -hmm. Then you chain two in the air. And then you do a three treble treble cluster. <laughs> <laughs> Which is okay. much easier than it sounds. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> so three, put your hook, yarn over your hook three times yeah. into that same space, pull the yarn back through. So once again, you've got five yeah. loops on your hook. Yarn, yarn over, over through, through two, two. Yarn over through two. two yarn over through two. two. Leave those two on there. So we've yeah. started one treble treble here. Right. Okay, start a second one. Through two, through two, through two. Leave those three on there and start a third one through two, through two, through two. So now you've got four loops on your hook. Right. Yarn over through all four. So you've got this idea of the corner space made from two treble treble clusters. 
Right. And those are the corners of those squares that you see there. Yeah, now it might look odd at this point, but I know that you're going to take the petrol and you're going to crochet around that long bit that exactly. you've got sticking Exactly, this out bit like here, that. which is what shapes them. You can't see the chains when you come to no, the next No, so you're going to crochet round exactly, that chain, Exactly, which aren't helps they? shape them into a leaf shape. Exactly. Listen to me. Oh, you should be doing this. <laughs> I'm better off just teaching it. <laughs> <laughs> so then you chain two again, and you're skipping over to the next chain two space. And in there, you're going to do a double treble cluster. Right. So with a double treble, you only put your yarn over twice before right. you go in. So is that what it means? A double treble is yarn over twice. A tri treble treble is three times. Yes, round. exactly. Um, I think they'd find an easier way of describing it. I know. It you feel like I like popcorn for that reason. It's yes. Because it's just a name for a stitch yes. rather than trying yeah, to describe treble, what you're treble, doing. It, yeah. So. A double treble cluster is a bit smaller. Right. And that's going to be the, the uh, leaf along the top, along the side of it. So chain two. So for a double treble, yarn over twice, into the chain space, pull back through, gives you four, yarn over through two, yarn over through two, yeah. leave two on there, yarn over twice, back in, repeat that twice more. So, whoops. So you're going to end up with four loops on your hook, mm -hmm. yarn over through all four. So you start to see how it shapes along the top of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got your corner and your edges. Right. Do you ever get, um, what's this, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like, I'm <laughs> not sitting down <laughs> on one. Not cramp, but you know, the kind of ache, achy, achy fingers. You know, amazingly, no touch wood. I'm very lucky. No, no, no. So you'd think so. I mean, sometimes I crochet for, you know, six, hours. seven hours more a day when I'm working on a project yeah. that's got a deadline. So no, no, I, I didn't yeah. think because the amount you did, it's yeah. just that, you know, like when sometimes when you're sewing, you kind of yeah, get that. Yeah, absolutely. Not, it's I do like get cramp, it's just that, you know, kind see of. See if I've got it. I get a line across my finger where the yarn's gone oh, across yes, my yes, finger yes, sometimes yeah. Yeah. and things like that. But yeah. Okay. So you've done the leaves. I've done the leaves. So then you add, exactly as you said, you now add the outer colour. So. I'm going to have you haven't got any petrol I now, ha it's, Well, I was going to do red. Sorry, excuse me, going down here. Oh. We were in a, had a lot of things oh, so to hang the, up, the didn't we, at the beginning? The, uh, they're all the same in here. That, exactly. That, that, all the same. Exactly. It's just the outside colour, yeah. So the centre part's all the same, and then you add different colours for your outside. Okay. So for the red one, you then join in any of the corner spaces. Mm -hmm. And now we're back in granny square territory. So you chain three in the air. Two trebles in that space. Chain two. Three trebles in the space. Right, yeah. Then you're going to put a treble in the top of the cluster and three trebles in the next chain space. So yeah. you're shaping it into a square now. I mean, the leaf round, the green round, does shape it. But this round also really helps to shape it. Yeah. And it changes the look of it, as you noticed, because it sort of shapes those leaves better. The only difference to a um, standard granny square is that you're going to put a treble into the top of the cluster here. So this big hole here, which is the V at the top of the cluster. Yeah. So a treble in there, three in the gap. And if I just do a couple more of those, you can see how that's shaped it. Kind of giving the leaves their uniformity doing exactly. this. Exactly, I love that about crochet. The, the following round always makes the round before look even better. Yeah. So if you're having doubts about it, then um, you know wait for the next round, and then you'll be amazed <laughs> by the <laughs> then you'll be how really much better. Disappointed. <laughs> then you'll be pleased. <laughs> okay, so you can see that shaping there. Yeah. And you've actually got, then you, what you do is you go all the way around, join it up, and then you add one more round in that colour. Yes. And then once you've done that, you make your um, 12 of these squares mm -hmm. for the front panel and the back panel. Yeah. And then you make some solid granny squares for the, for the base. base and the sides. But that's the one above there. That's not a granny square, is no, it? No, that's just rows of trebles. So that's the shape oh, of the handle. Oh, sorry, I've taken that up. So, so that, the, that bit there for the handle. Yes. So these are your six. So you obviously make a front and a back. Yes. These are your six um, flower granny squares. Yeah. Then you've got your two sections of 
What did you just call that? For the handles. Yeah. So Trebles. What, oh, what, so what you do again is just like with um, the other one. Just trying, I've got so many patterns with me yeah. here. Here it is underneath. <laughs> okay. Again, you make you have got these panels that you make up. So you make up the panels. You can see that's my bag laid flat. Yeah. Um, and then I've got this on top of fabric. So yeah, I drew yeah. round, which is why I hesitated earlier. So, I mean, <laughs> you might not approve. Oh, so this is how you make your lining. <laughs> okay. so this is how I made my lining. No, no, no. So anyway, it's fine. If you're much more experienced sewer than me, you might have another way of doing no, it. No, 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 that's a brilliant way of doing you it. You lay your, because your tension is going to be different, everybody's tension is different and your size of your bag, whatever, yeah. however, it doesn't matter. Anyway, yeah. but because your bag might be smaller or bigger than mine, I didn't put a template in. I suggested that you laid it yeah. out flat on top of the fabric. But you need to block it before you block do that. Block it, don't you? yeah, and then make sure. And then I drew around mine with my big ruler, but make sure it's symmetrical, as Rebecca said to me. So yeah, you need to fold it in half, etc. Make sure oh, it all yes, measures yes, up. Yes. Oh yes, yes. So once you've drawn around, yeah. you then fold it in half because you don't exactly. want one bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I made the I measured around the lining while it was all laid out flat. Perfect. And then I assembled the bag, sewed together the lining and then inserted it in. And then those handles then fold over and get sewn down yes. over the top of the dowels. Yeah. So that's kind of your assembly stage. Perfect. And you've got a little, in the kit you get a bag, magnetic bag clasp. So you can hold it all together. Oh, okay. So that's oh, that's in there brilliant. Well. I should get that in there as well. I didn't yeah. delve to the bottom of the bag. Yeah. So you've got your um, dowels. You've got your magnetic bag clasp. You've got your bits for your bee. You've got the eyes, the lobster clasp. Yeah, I noticed there's even a little bag of, of uh, wadding in there. Yeah, right, even a little bag of toy stuffing. So the only thing you don't get is the hook and the lining. Oh, so. Perfect. Right. <laughs> we need to stop there. When you're in next. <laughs> um, <laughs> Take a twenty <laughs> 26th, Monday 26th. Oh, you'll be on with Rebecca Reed then. Yeah, yeah. And except I, I've just realised I'm doing, I'm doing one of Rebecca Reed's month, two of Rebecca Reed's Mondays next month. Yeah. Um, so we'll see you then. Thank you very much indeed. And now I just need to. What am I going to recap this? Bags first. Bags first. I can do that. Right. We've only got a minute left. You see. So. Pink one is this one. Third of the stock of the pink one has gone. It's cute, isn't it? That pink one, that, that's a really lovely uh, kind of antique, dusty pink, that one. What's that called? Can you remember? Vintage pink. Oh, yeah. vintage pink. There you go. Yeah. That's the pink one. <laughs> then the blue one. Now, this is the one I want to point out because this is called denim. If that's a petroly blue. And there's, so you get all of this, all of that yes. comes in the kit yeah. as well. And you have to make that, obviously. And then I'll put that bumblebee in there so it doesn't get lost. Okay, that's the blue one. And then the red one, who did you say this, this one belonged to? Um, that one, Terry Ann is in the process of making Terry Ann, thank you for loaning us your... Um, obviously, you get enough to make the whole thing. <laughs> At £30.99. And, and what colour is that called? Can you remember? Poppy. Poppy, of course, Poppy. Right, we've got to go. Thank you ever so much. Uh, the next Yarn Lane is on, on Friday. And it is... Get round. Oh, it's me on my... <laughs> doing a kit roundup. Thank you for your company. We will see you very soon. Thank you, Sam, as always. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you on Sewing Street tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock and back here on Friday at 12.